Disclaimer, these videos are meant to be a brief overview of the subject. They are written to meet time constraints while still conveying factual historical information. My sources for each video are in the video summary below and can get you started on a more in-depth look at the subject. On a personal note, if there is a way to mispronounce the name, I will do it. It is a gift and I am sorry about it ahead of time. Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Prairie Grove, located in Washington County, Arkansas on December 7th, 1862. Union General James G. Blunt had won the Battle of Cane Hill. Separated from the rest of his army by almost 100 miles, Blunt decided to remain at Cane Hill for a few weeks to recover. On December 6th, Confederate General Thomas C. Hindman was marching for Blunt trying to take advantage of Blunt's separation from the rest of the Union forces. Unbeknownst to Hindman, Blunt had received intelligence indicating attack and Blunt requested help. Union Commander Francis J. Heron, commanding two divisions, set out to help Blunt. Forcing Hindman to change the original plans and turn and face the oncoming heron who is approaching from the north. The battle happened at Prairie Grove near the Illinois River on a wooded hill surrounded by farm fields. Hindman's troops were arrayed alongside the crest of the hill facing north, waiting for Heron. This maneuver seemed ill thought out as Hindman's forces were bigger than either Blunt or Heron's individual forces. Instead of attacking one of the Union commanders and utilizing his size, Hindman camped the hill and waited for both Blunt and Heron to approach from opposite directions. Blunt and Heron took advantage of this mistake and teamed up. Heron's two divisions approached Hindman from the north. Unfortunately, Heron's men were exhausted from the march to come here. They had marched fast enough that they lost a large portion of the two divisions who had to slow down to rest. This left less than 3,500 exhausted Union troops to attack 11,000 Confederate soldiers. Heron did not realize the entire Confederate force of 11,000 men had camped at Prairie Grove, Instead, he thought it was just a smaller blocking force meant to slow them down. He never anticipated that Hindman wasn't going to attack Blunt's outnumbered men. Heron started the battle on December 7th at 10 a.m. Unleashing 24 Union artillery pieces for more than two hours, the initial salvo destroyed the Confederate artillery and many of the Confederate troops had to take shelter on the other side of the hill, leaving their positions. Seeing so many men pull back, Heron ordered his infantry to attack and 2,000 Union soldiers rolled across the fields and up the hill. As they moved past Archibald Borden's house, they unexpectedly encountered two separate Confederate divisions at the top, commanded by Brigadier Generals John S. Marmaduke and General Francis A. Shoup. The Union forces were crushed by the superior numbers of the Confederates. This is where Heron learned it wasn't just a blocking force, but the entire Confederate army. The retreating Union soldiers fled back to the Union artillery positions. Unfortunately for the Confederates, they chased the Union and found themselves in the middle of an open field when the Union artillery opened fire again, wreaking havoc among the Confederate soldiers. Even with this punch, Confederate General Hindman realized how badly he outnumbered Heron and began moving his left flank forward to sweep the Union troops out of the area. Unfortunately for the Confederates, they moved too slowly, and as they moved down the hill, they were struck by a new force of 30 Union artillery pieces that was part of General Blunt's forces that had been moving up. This is where Hindman realized his mistake of waiting. Blunt's division had a raid into the field and began the rescue of Union General Heron's troops. As they charged the Confederate forces, the heavy fighting raged for the better part of an hour and centered around William Morton's house on the top of the hill. Eventually, the Confederates pushed the Union infantry back and they once again charged the Union troops in the field. Once again, Union artillery wreaked havoc among the Confederate troops, pushing them back up the hill for the night. During the night, Union troops called up reinforcements as many of Hindman's Confederate forces deserted. A large portion of those deserters went over and joined the Union forces. Realizing his position was untenable, Hindman returned to the Confederate lines with only a fraction of the forces he had left with. A very low estimate of casualties were 1,251 Union soldiers, comprising of 175 killed, 813 wounded, and 263 missing. While the Confederates suffered more than 1,317 casualties, including 164 killed, 817 wounded, and 336 missing. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.